So yeah, you're here with Brandon Novak uh, from those movies Jackass, author of Dream Seller, an autobiography addiction memoir, and I am here to introduce to you my role model, Mr. Bucky Lasik. Hi, I'm Bucky Lasik, professional skateboarder and rallycross driver. What we're here for today is, uh, and uh, you have to bear with me because I've never been the interviewer. Um, the Huffington Post has asked me to uh, to interview one of my role models. Okay. And um, I happened to be in Baltimore doing things with my mother, and I caught, I caught word that you were here. And, uh, you know, what better person to, to a, no, just what better person to interview for being my role model? Because I remember, I remember being 13, and I got my skateboard, and finally I was down at a, at a contest and in the harbor and they invited me back to sports elite to skate this mini ramp mm -hmm. which was up the street from here and you were there and i remember watching uh you skate that mini ramp with such style and finesse mm -hmm. and and the gold chain you have to be on mm -hmm. that i literally went out and got like four days later <laughs> yeah. and uh so ladies and gentlemen i want to introduce to you bucky lasik uh professional skateboarder uh Dra drift car racer? No, rally cross. Rally cross. Yeah, for Subaru. Yeah. So, uh, husband, father, uh, jack of all trades, master of all, seems to be. I try. I try. So, uh, so yeah. I mean, I remember growing up with you. I didn't have a father figure. Right. You know? Did I? I grew up, you know, a lot, you know, single mother. Yeah, oh. and, and coming from a really rough neighborhood, I remember mm -hmm. your house constantly getting broken into, they would steal stuff, they would put it back, a lot of crazy things going yeah. on. And, and, and your house was uh, somewhat of a broken house as mine. Mm -hmm. And I remember me being 14, 15, and, and you being, you know, in the teens, like yeah. 18, 19. Right. And totally having blinders on to like, what the streets might seem to offer or what fast money would offer. No. Your passion and heart lied in skateboarding. Right. And mine did as well. And I remember looking at you and saying like, this guy isn't worried about the girls, the, the nightlife, the clubs, like he eats, breathes and sleeps skateboards. Right. And, and I followed you every step of the way. Dude, we were like, right, you're like my right hand dude. I'd come out and get you, you know, I started driving, you know, when I got the car. Yeah. And it was just like us. Yeah. We had like a crew of like five people and we always hung. And I, and I, I you know, you were my favorite skateboarder in the world and, and your style was like no other. And uh, all I wanted to do was be a professional skateboarder because I saw that's what you were doing. Yeah. And uh, lo and behold, you got me on the Pal Peralta and, and you kind of, you paved the way for a fellow like me to come along and, and to possibly obtain those career goals, life right, goals. Right, but you had the talent to do it too, you know what I mean? I just kind of gave you the... I kind of, I kind of, kind of brought you into it and introduced you to people, and you, you did your thing, and yeah, and, and that's what was cool because not only did I, I, I want to emulate you, be like you, skateboard like you, uh, I, I also was blessed enough to have you in my life to get me to that stepping stone. You know, you were my stepping stone to get to the people I needed to get to. Because right. without a fellow like you, like nine out of ten, that doesn't happen. You know, there's a million good skaters, but it's not the right person, the right place, or the right time. Right, it's all who you surround yourself with. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, so when uh, the Huffington Post had gotten in touch with me, uh, you know, they asked me to interview a role model. Uh, my mother was first, and then you're, you know, we're, we're number two. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot away with these questions, and uh, you have to bear with me because, like I said, I'm not usually. Well, that's up. To, that's up to Jason here to edit it. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> See what you're worth here, Jay. All right, so question number one here, Mr. Lasik. Tell me something you've never told me. Um, I guess one thing that I would like to, I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of something that we went through was uh, I showed my kids like where we, uh, where we had a big crash. Remember the big car crash? Yeah, I do. That was uh, pretty devastating and uh, I just want to say, kind of, we kind of, we kind of just rolled through it, you know, because we were young. But just want to say, I'm very sorry to put you through that. Thank you, man. That really means a lot to me. That, that really does. You were young. We were, we were kind of reckless. We were driving. It was raining, and uh, 
I lost control of the car and we hit a tree and we had to climb out the sunroof. It was bad, it was a bad accident. He was pretty shooken up. I remember that, that was that actually turned into one of your graphics for your pro deck. Mm -hmm. remember, and, and I by no means held you responsible for it. You know what I mean? We, right, I mean, we were young, we were just, yeah. yeah, we were doing our thing. We were, and, and then back to that broken family that we come from, my father came in the picture and was like, you know, you could probably get some money out of this. I'm like, it's my best friend in the yeah. world. If Buggy did it, it was an accident. Like, right. no, you're crazy. Right. But, uh... Remember yeah. when your dad took my car out? I do. <laughs> <laughs> we went to California. We were staying at Hawk's house. Remember the first, what was the first time I left it? Didn't I leave it at your house first? Because I went away. So I was like, can I park my car at your house? Because I lived in a sketchy neighborhood. Yeah. I didn't want to leave it in my neighborhood. So I parked it at your house. And then I come back from the trip, from me and you, we come back from California. Yeah. And your dad's like, I'm like, whoa, there's like, there's like cigarette burns on my car cover. Like, like someone flicked a cigarette on it or something. And then your dad comes out and he's like, yeah, this thing's like, it's pretty cool, but it's really low. Like, <laughs> and he was talking about driving it. His dad took my car out and drove it while I was at his house. So you're like, it runs good, but this yeah. can be fixed, that yeah, can yeah. be fixed. He was taking it to the corner pub, yeah. you know, <laughs> and, and cigarette runs. Yeah. Well, it was better than what Young did to it. I know. Young, I parked my car at my buddy Young's house, and he took it out for his graduation party with his date, ran a red light, got T-boned in my car. <laughs> and crash my car while I was away. I think I should have just left it in the hood. Yeah, it, it probably would be safer in yeah, the hood. Yeah, a broken window and a, a missing stereo opposed to... No big deal. Yeah. Fixable solutions. Yeah. As opposed to young taking on a prom night and T-boning it. Or my dad putting miles on it that you can't get back. Right. Taking the value of All right, down. well, back, back to the questions. All right, right. see, I'm too easy to get off track, man. I'm a horrible interviewer. What do you wish you knew when you were my age? At the time? Your I'm age assuming. at the time as, as being young? Yeah, 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 I would imagine so. What do you wish you knew when you were my age? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think we're both kind of young at that age, um, but looking what I know now to what our age then, I think just being maybe a little bit more respectful to others and in and, and, and our surroundings, you know, and maybe a little bit more passion yeah compassion towards uh other people and not just ourselves because we were kind of in our own zone yeah we literally lived in our own world yeah and it's funny you say that because as i as i get older you know like uh i really believe in karma and, and what you put out in this universe you will get back totally you know so i have a great answer there um tell me the story tell me the story of the happiest moment you've ever had um Happiest moment I've ever had was probably marrying my wife Jen. Yeah, Great. she's like she's like my right hand man, woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She she keeps everything in order, and I mean she's there for me, good and bad. Yeah, I uh, I couldn't be happy. You know, it's funny because I I'd seen you have a few girlfriends, and, and each of them lasted a significant amount of time. But then when I, I knew you had got with Jen, married her, and then moved out to California. Like, whoa, this woman is like willing to uproot her life, mm -hmm. her, everyone she knows to, to support your yeah, career. Yeah, it was a team effort for sure. Cause I was gonna move to California probably three years before I met her, but never made the move. Yeah. And uh, meeting her, she, she she gave me that confidence to move out there. Yeah, that that's that's phenomenal. That's a big step. Yeah, man, this world's a scary place. It's, it's nice to have, you know, a partner mm -hmm. with it. Um, okay. Uh, what is the hardest challenge you faced in your life? Um, I think the hardest challenge I face in my life is just um, always moving forward. Um, is it's the hardest? I mean, right now, the hardest challenge for anyone's life is always to keep moving forward. But I think maybe if I look back, the hardest challenge for me was. Uh, I think maybe not not growing up the way that I was showed, you know what I mean? Not the way that I was shown. Yeah. Like not growing up the way that I was shown by my mom, not living. I was kind of, I kind of lived a, a rough young life that I learned through her mistakes. So I think just learning through your, 
I think the toughest thing was not to fall in the wrong path. Sure. Yeah, I think probably moving to California was probably one of the best decisions I've made is to, to kind of get out of Baltimore and, and, and not fall into this, this mold of, uh, you know, of, of your surroundings. Because it's so easy to do so. It is, yeah. yeah. A lot of people um, that I grew up with, they've never left their area and they just get, they've gotten soaking up into this, into this culture that is, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of depressing, you know, some guys get out and some guys don't and, and they just get caught up in this mix, you know. And then their life is just constantly filled with what ifs. Like, yeah, what if I yeah. would have taken this opportunity? What if I would have taken this chance? Yeah. What if I would have moved It's very negative too, they, they, and they perceive they're in this rut, you know what I mean? So it's like they, they, they're just very negative. So, you know, I think the toughest thing was just to uh, not fall victim to my surroundings as, as a youth. Yeah, man, I, I firmly believe stand for something or fall for anything. Mm -hmm. You know, firm believer. Right um, yeah, I don't, I mean, it's not just Baltimore. It's just, I think it's just the low income where I, where I came from, like the Armstead Gardens, Hong yeah. Ridge, Donald Heights, like yeah. all those neighborhoods, like I was the minority. Yeah, 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 yeah. You so were that man. I, I think that's what made me the person I am because I saw it well before it was imprinted in my head to hate. I was in, it was imprinted, it was embedded in my head to kind of understand and kind of survive. Yeah. So I, I was able to kind of. And also up. find that like uh, that, that compassionate side of being. You know what I mean? Because you were the odd man out. So I. Right. So like when a fellow like me came along that was 13 that had no business hanging with your other kids, like you took compassion. Right, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I was, I have a lot of cousins, I'm a single, I'm a, I'm a, um, I can't think, of, I'm an only child, okay. um, so I had a lot of cousins I grew up around with, so I was always the outcast, I was always the one that was, even though it was my family, I was the, I was the cousin over the family's house sure. all the time living with my aunt and uncle, um, so that kind of taught me to kind of, yeah. <laughs> no, it's good. Better than less. Yeah, that's up to you to edit that. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Okay. Um, what's the biggest lesson you'd like to pass on to future generations? Uh, the biggest lesson I'd like to pass on to future generations, I think, is to mm, treat others as you would want them to treat you as the common one. But I, I like to see others, I like to see people kind of, I get joy out of helping others, you know, to be able to not be so selfish. Yeah. You know? I, 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 no, I think selfishness breeds hatefulness. And if you're so selfish in, in your own box, then you're not, you're not, you're not living for one. You're so, you're, you're, you're kind of secluding yourself into this little realm of, I don't know, it's self righteousness like or what I don't I don't even know if that's the right terminology, but I think to be not selfish and to, to consider other people's emotions and feelings and be compassionate. I, I couldn't agree more, you know, uh, because I you know, I deal with my own issues and uh, those issues I deal with at one point in time have me completely consumed with self. Right. And you have to take care of yourself. Yeah. To an extent, yeah. but then where I've gotten the process with my journey is that like now it's all about helping others, mm -hmm. and when I when I help others or make the world a better place, then my world becomes better. And it also helps fix your wrong. Exactly. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can always yeah. fix your wrong. Yeah. If you've done something bad, you can always turn it around and, and and better yourself and others in the process. I couldn't agree more. What are some of the little things you did for yourself or your family that made the biggest impact? Um, something I did for myself and my family that made the biggest impact, I think, is uh, moving to California. Um, getting getting more involved in the skateboard community because being a skateboarder living in Baltimore wasn't really doing any good for anyone. I mean, out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. So I think picking up my bags and moving to California with a, a fresh newborn and a and a uh, newlywed. You know, yeah, it's kind of like yeah. time to make it happen. Yeah, like we made it happen. We, we packed our bags like, uh, 
what, what's that? What's the TV show? They moved to Beverly Hills and found oil. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Beverly Hillbillies. Beverly Hillbillies. Yes. yes. <laughs> we were like Beverly Hillbillies, but we're the from Baltimore. Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you had to choose one role model for me, who would it be and why? A role model for you or a role yeah. model for me? I guess if I'm the interview I'm the interviewer for you. and that's yeah, so I'm assuming so a role model this, for you. <laughs> choose a role model for me, pal. <laughs> even though I claim that you are mine. But um, uh, a role model uh, a role model for Brandon Novak. Novakiak. <laughs> yeah, I mean I can't say his name like he says my name. Let's but, say it. Yeah. <laughs> A uh, role model for Brandon Novak. Um, I think a role model for you would be is, uh, the Dalai Lama. Yeah. I think for anyone. Yeah. Uh, he speaks, he just, he, he doesn't speak about, you know, he just speaks about right and wrong, you know, and, and he follows, it's all about compassion and it's, it's, uh, I don't know. It's, 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 it's my role model. He's my role model. You know, Somebody was telling me a story about him the other day that a mother has a son, had a son, has a son still, and the son is infatuated with him. Infatuated. But the son eats a lot of candy. So the mother has the son, and the mother goes to talk to the Dalai Lama and said, Look, my son loves candy. Can you tell him, like, not to eat it or maybe cut back? And he says, Sure. Tell him to bring him back to me in a week. So the mother brings him back in a week. Uh, the Dalai Lama talks to the son and he said, look, you should really like cut out the candy. It's bad for your teeth, bad for your health. And the mother looks at him and said, well, why couldn't you just say that last week? And he said, well, because I eat candy as well. So I had to stop before I could tell him to stop. Right, yeah, he's you know like a mean? big child at heart. Yeah. So, yeah. so that was really cool. And this was just last week someone was telling me that. Yeah. So uh, I like that. Yeah, it's, it's, can't go wrong following the path of the Dalai Lama. Yeah, all right. Well, there you heard it from uh, my friend, my uh, role model, and uh, somebody that I admire a great deal, Bucky Lacey. Thanks, Thanks man. man. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. Definitely. Like, they, you know, this is actually the first time since the Sports League days where we, I have sat and down with you completely sober of any mind That's of incredible. altering substance. Yeah. So this is like a 13-year-old sitting down with you again. It's crazy. <laughs> Where's that beat at this <laughs> Yeah, man, it's nice. I wish I had, I had came to town sooner. I didn't know you were here. Yeah, well, hit me up when you come out. I will. I will. So you're off to the airport. Uh, off to my mom's. Say hi. And cool. Go pick up Tenzin. We have a little eight-year-old too. Oh really? Boy or girl? Girl, all girls. That's all I do. Oh, <laughs> I just produce girls. Oh my. Yeah, it's fun. That's Mornings are great. You were so mopped up, you tried to hum his mom once. <laughs> yeah, you were heroin and you tried to.